Good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday, September 20th, and although we're only two days away from the fall solstice, here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, we are going bananas. Harvesting bananas, that is. Right here to my left, I have a nice ripe bunch of dwarf Orinoco bananas that are ready for harvest. And you may be thinking to yourself, how on earth are you growing bananas for food in North Carolina? Isn't it too cold? And the answer is kind of yes, kind of no. The reality is that banana trees themselves grow very well in zone sevens and warmer, and you can grow most varieties of bananas as an ornamental tree. The only issue with bananas and growing them for fruit is they tend to have about an 18 month or so growing and fruiting cycle. So most of us are not in frost free climates. You'd think you can't do it. However, that's not the case because the trees grow so well if you live in a warm zone eight or zone nine, and in some cases even zone seven, with a little bit of winter protection, you can actually easily overwinter your banana trees, protect them against the freeze, give them a huge head start, and grow them into next season. And I'll make sure to link to a video above where I show you exactly how to do that. And I did that last year for only a few dollars and a few minutes of my time, and here I have this beautiful ripe bunch of bananas. Now a few fun facts about bananas. Most people call these banana trees, but bananas are in fact not trees. What they are is they are an underground rhizome called a corm, and each individual banana tree is actually an herb. It is an herbaceous pseudostem. So what you see here that the banana is fruiting off of is an herbaceous pseudostem. So once that herbaceous pseudostem fruits, it actually dies. So after I harvest this, I actually need to cut down the pseudostem itself because it is no longer viable. So I want to show you two things in this video. One, how to harvest the bananas, and two, how to mulch the bananas after the fact. Most of us remember from school that bananas are very high in potassium, and the banana tree themselves have a very high demand for potassium because of that. And as a result, the actual plant material, the pseudostem and the leaves of the banana tree are very high in potassium. So once you're done cutting down the tree, one of the best things for you to fertilize the banana with is actually itself. So after I harvest this banana, I'm gonna show you how to chop up the tree. And harvesting the banana tree is very simple. All we're going to do is use one of these hand saws. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm just going to cut this pseudo stem. And then we are going to have a great bunch of bananas. Now, after you harvest your bananas, you're going to need to let them hang and ripen for a while. In an ideal situation, you would do this in a warm, screened-in porch uh, to keep the bugs away because as these ripen, they're going to attract a lot of bugs. I do not have that, so I have to hang the bananas off the shelf in my garage. And what I'm going to do is um, I simply have it uh, hung up by some butcher's twine, and I have the bananas hanging upside down. So they're drooping, almost like a, a fig would droop. And uh, that's, how you want to, um, that's how you want to have your bananas hung. It's just tied up here. And in order to protect them, I am going to use these large... Uh, four inch by six inch or so uh, organza bags and if you want to know where to get these I have them linked to my Amazon storefront so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, put them around the bananas and it's going to take me a few bags to do this but then you just tighten them and that will keep most of the fruit flies and any other kind of curious critters off of your uh, your bananas so here you can see what the bananas look like now that I put the organza bags on them. And they are tied up nice and tight so no flies can get to them. And that will protect the bananas so they can ripen here pest free. Another fun fact of bananas is that there are over a thousand different varieties of banana. The banana that we usually see in the grocery store is called a Grand Nain Cavendish type banana. And it is only one of, like I said, over a thousand different varieties of bananas out there. This variety of banana right here is an older banana that's been around for a very long time called an Orinoco 
This is the dwarf version, the dwarf Orinoco. And as you can see, this is a very short banana and you can eat it in three different stages. You can eat it green as a plantain. You can eat it in this yellow stage and just peel it back and, and eat it out of your hand like you would a normal grocery store banana. Or you could wait until it turns black and you can eat it as a dessert banana. So right now it's in that mid stage. So let's go ahead and pull this. But just look at this. This is my first ever North Carolina grown and ripened banana. And that's what it looks like inside right there. It looks like a good old banana. So let's bite into this and see how it is. Mmm. Much better than what you get in a grocery store. It obviously tastes like a banana. They all kind of taste similar, but this has a more complex taste to it than what we're uh, used to. It almost tastes like apples and citrus. If you, can, uh, if you can imagine eating an apple and an orange and a banana all together as one, uh, that's kind of what this tastes like and, and it's just delicious. Uh, I'm really happy about this. Now, as I mentioned before, after the banana fruits, the pseudo stem dies. So we need to remove this. And because bananas have such a high requirement for nutrients, they're almost impossible to overfeed. They're one of the most voracious feeders you'll ever find. It is a great thing to mulch a banana tree with itself by chopping the pseudo stem and all the leaves up into chunks. For future reference, there's really three great things that are natural that you can feed a banana. The number one thing is itself, the number two thing is urine, and the number three thing is wood ash. So uh, wood ash is very high in potassium, so if you really want to have great healthy banana plants, put down natural wood ash after it cools, pee on it, and then anytime you have any banana debris uh, on the leaves, just shred it up and lay it down. They also love hardwood mulch, and if you want to add chemical additives, you can use muriate of potash crystals and dilute them. They work fantastic for growth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this handsaw and I'm going to chop down this banana tree pseudo stem about six inches above the ground. I'm going to cut it on an angle. Now, in areas where bananas grow, there is a beetle called a banana root borer that can bore into these roots and into the corn and destroy the corn. So a way that they get around that in um, their native climates, like in Costa Rica, is to actually cut a hole out of the corn, uh, out of the pseudo stem right here, because it will fill with water in the rain and beetles will drown if they try to nest in there. Now, I have no idea if there is a boring beetle here in North Carolina, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to cut out this center section, which is why I left the pseudo stem high. And then you can just lift that out and you want to fill this up with water when you're done. You can either wait for a rain shower or you can just take a hose and just fill it up. And that right there if any banana or if any borer tries to bore into there, if you fill it up with water, it will drown. And now we're going to hack up our banana pseudo stem. We're going to start off with the leaves. And it is important that you try and, you, and cut the leaves down a little bit because if you simply throw them on the bottom of the banana, it will block water. Um, from accumulating and it'll keep the soil underneath it dry. So you want to chop it up kind of finely. Um, that way water can easily penetrate. So I'm just going to take these little hand shears and just uh, chop these leaves down to size into maybe three inch pieces or so. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the banana pseudo stem into pieces. And now that the banana pseudo stem is cut into pieces, I'm also going to section it down the center vertically. And the reason why I'm going to do this is I have heard that if you just cut them into whole chunks like this and you leave them at the base of your tree, when they are complete like this, they can release an off gas that can scare earthworms and other beneficial worms and uh, bacteria and fungi away. There's a mild toxic effect. 
but that is mitigated when you cut them down the center and you open them up. And here they are opened up. Now in Central American countries, they use a machete to do this because it's a lot easier. I don't have one, so I'm using this handsaw, but if you have a machete, please by all means use that. So here we have our wheelbarrow full of banana mulch all chopped up into pieces. So now we're simply going to take our chopped up pseudo stems and we're going to lie them down underneath the banana tree. And then we're going to take all of our leaves and place them on top. And then we're just going to wait for the magic of Mother Nature to break everything down for us. And that right there is how you can grow, harvest, and care for edible bananas in northern climates. Everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything I use in my garden, everything I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. If you use our Amazon links, we get a commission for that, so it really helps me keep producing these videos and it'll help keep them coming. It won't cost you anything. Once again, thank you so much for watching again. I appreciate your viewership and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, Dalester, you've always been funny with your eating habits and sometimes I think that you like fruits and vegetables more than you like meat. So here we have a little taste test right here. I have an organic dried Turkish fig. I have a block of cheddar cheese and I have a block of pork loin that's cooked in tomato broth. Let's see which one the Dalester likes the most. So I have the three plates that are placed over here, so he has to turn the corner and get to them. That way he can't just run straight at him. So let's see which plate Dale likes the most. Okay, buddy, come. What does he go to first? And he goes to the, the meat first, of course, and then the cheese, and then back to the meat. Uh, Looks like the dried fig is going last. So I kind of had my money on the cheese first, but at the end of the day, he went for the fig last. He is still a dog, so I guess he's a meatitarian first and foremost. Can we get a goodbye, Dale?